as an athlete, performer, or competitor, not being able to push yourself past your comfort zone is one of the major mental blocks. First off, you need to understand, I operate under this principle, performance equals potential minus interference. Meaning, you will play, compete, or perform your best when you have no interference or mental emotional blocks. Now, to be able to clear this mental block, let's call it self-sabotage, it's extremely helpful to first understand it and then we can take it apart. Now, let me explain your solution to this problem using my four-step race formula for mental toughness, which I developed from my experience working with thousands of athletes and performers over the years, and because this is the vehicle that will transport you to clearing this block. It's what I use for everything now to help my clients acquire mental toughness, and it starts with R, relentless. This means you must be relentless about your ability and your desire to want to change these automatic thought responses that seemingly are out of your control. They are not. I give you the tools to believe you can change them and to actually do it. You just cannot give up on it and I promise you it will go away. This video starts that process for you. A. Awareness. So let's go there on this mental block, self-sabotage. It's actually the most infuriating of the mental blocks because it often shows up right when you get close to winning or right before you're about to achieve something you want. And what's going on here is that your inner mind is acting like a police officer and enforcing your inner laws. You've been writing laws for yourself that the intelligence of your body makes sure are observed. So what happened for you is that, you know, somewhere in your past you learned something about yourself and how you fit into your world, laws about yourself. You created what's called a wholehearted belief about yourself. You then carry this belief with you all the way through today. And then your biocomputer, your body's intelligence, runs that program for you during competition or performing, just like a computer does. For example, let's say that in the third grade, you were playing a sport like, I don't know, maybe soccer. And let's say you got a, a minor nagging injury that never fully heals, and because of that, you sit the bench more than anyone on the team for the whole season. On top of that, Maybe one of your teammates, a bully, says something mean to you about it like, you'll never be good enough for our team. And you buy into it. And you think about it while sitting on the bench all season, feeling bad about it. It becomes a permanent belief. I'll never be good enough. Now flash forward to your 30s and you're playing tennis late in the match and you're winning. All of a sudden, you start losing your focus. You start playing tentatively, you're scared and you end up losing. The I'll never be good enough law or belief kicked in and your body sabotaged your game. Now don't feel bad, everybody has some of this type of interference. Which brings us to C, clear. You see, I believe there is always a reason why we do everything we do, and there's a reason why we respond and, re and react like we do. And that goes to the sabotaging mind just the same. You have to clear the reason why the sabotaging happened. The wholehearted beliefs and the destructive inner mind laws. And here's the kicker. You have to do it at the inner mind programming or the bodily level. You can't just think it up here. Once these beliefs get embedded in your inner mind program, you have to come up with a counter belief that is powerful enough to dissolve it. And then you have to go where that belief lives, which is your body. Now, typical mental viruses or beliefs I help my clients destroy are, I'm not a good finisher. I don't deserve to win. I never start out good. I'm not fast enough. Other people win, not me. I can't fill in the blank there. So to clear those kinds of bodily programs, the laws you've written, you have to first have the right counter thought for you. And you have to get it from your head to your body. So how do you do that? Well, I could teach for hours on that and that principle runs through everything I do 
It's happening even right now. It's the reason why I have such a high success rate with my clients. But the gist of it is this. The best way to get these countering thoughts into your inner mind is to intend to do so and practice doing so. Now I do this in part for my clients with guided visualizations. Moving on to E, emotional mastery. Now this is the final piece for the self-sabotager because your beliefs have been operating for a long time. Now, even if you were to be successful at clearing them out, you still have a lifetime of how you react and think when you feel bad. Now, these emotional habits are just as destructive as the original sabotaging beliefs. Think about this. When you feel bad, for any reason, you tend to, take, you tend to think negatively about things, don't you? You see the world through negative lenses. You let your mind follow your body. Feel bad? Think bad. You are a slave to your difficult emotions. You have to break free of those chains if you want to break through the invisible barriers you've built around yourself. That's why my emotional mastery process, that's why it's so successful in what it does as part of the race formula. Defeatism, procrastination, unmotivated. They're all emotions that keep you in the negativity cycle until you master them. Thoughts lead to emotions, which lead to bodily feelings, which lead to performance and action. If the self-sabotaging mind is your challenge, the race formula eliminates the mental baggage and puts you in charge of your emotions. Now I'm going to send you an email tomorrow to pick up where I left off here to give you more tools for all of this. Look for it. The race formula always works when you work it. Let's do this. I'm Craig Sigal, your mental toughness trainer.